So today we're gonna to be checking out a movie called Another Gay Movie. Scientifically speaking, we're all still virgins. It came out in 2006 and falls into that same category of campy but sexy but dumb sort of film, like American Pie or Not Another Teen Movie, but gay. Coming out stories are so passe bourgeois. I remember watching it at some point during my adolescence and it having a weird sort of influence on me and discovering my gay identity, which probably isn't a good thing because I do remember it being pretty crude and weird. Just thanks, I'm special. <laughs> but who knows, you know, gay people are also pretty crude and weird, so maybe it could be considered a period piece. Anyway, I probably watched it when I was about 14, and all I remember is that it certainly was Interesting. The movie opens up at Santorum High School, the home of the Santorum Donkeys. STD. From the get-go, we're being told that this movie is going to be a ride. We enter a classroom to find a cute high school student named Andy, who's played by Michael Carbonaro, who I don't remember being in this movie. You know, he has that magic show called the Carbonaro Effect. Who knew that before he was doing magic tricks, he literally was a trick. He's in a classroom staring at his teacher's ass. Very relatable. But then wait, it pans up and it's, oh my God, Graham Norton, who I also didn't realize was in this movie playing a Russian teacher named Mr. Puckov. And I certainly would let him Puckov all over me. Andy, you could come up here, please. Anyway, our student Andy gets up to answer a question and he and Mr. Puckov are both rock hard, naturally. And then Puckoff pulls down his pants and they both start to fuck like jackrabbits. I can't tell you how many variants of this exact scene have played out in my head throughout the course of high school and college. It's truly bringing me back. Anyway, it turns out that none of this is actually happening and it's just mental jerk off material for Andy. We find him in bed doing what you might expect, using a carrot as a dildo. <laughs> when suddenly his mother barges in, leaving Andy with a carrot in his ass and his mom without a clue. Mom! Did you eat all my cucumbers again. Can you knock? Well, I'm sorry, sweetie, but every time I go to make a garden salad, my vegetables vanish. She grabs a towel off his bed only to find a cucumber and a condom. You know, Andy really makes an effort to get his daily serving of vegetables, it seems. Then his dad barges in. Ready for graduation, son? He sees the cucumber. Hey, hon, there's your cucumber. Both of his parents are in denial that their son is fucking himself with vegetables. Dear Lord. No, 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 hon, that's just a, a shrink wrap they put on at the supermarket. And ultimately the blanket gets ripped off his bed only to reveal what might as well be an entire farmer's market. And a caulking gun. Every gay man loves cock, let me tell you. His parents finally leave the room and his dad states, Well, I guess that's life with a gay son. I guess it is. The next scene, we're finally graduating high school. We meet Andy's GBFs. We have a jock named Jared, a geek named Griff, and a flamboyant twink named Nico. Ah. They all look at least like 27 to be honest honest, but that's Hollywood, right? And he tells him that now that he's no longer a student, he fully plans on getting it on with his haughty teacher, Mr. Puckoff. Hello, boys. Arctic congratulations. Thanks, Mr. P. Uh, and I just wanted to say that I'm really going to miss your ass, your class this year. And uh, we were just wondering whether or not you're going to be coming on any of us tonight, because uh, I'm going to be coming and I would really like it if you came too. Then we're finally introduced to the film's token lesbian, Dawn, AKA Muffler. What the fuck? And she serves as a catalyst to the film's main thesis, that being that none of the boys have had sex yet, and it's about damn time they do. None of ya has done the big A. And invites them all to a party that she's throwing. Nighttime rolls around and they are drooling over Jared's date, who evidently is a PNP power bottom, and none of them have any idea what that even means. Then out of nowhere, BAM! Mr. Puckoff shows up because you know what? A teacher definitely would show up to an underage drinking party with all of his students the day after graduation. Meanwhile, Jared is hooking up with his PNP power bottom and he throws up all over his back, which I'm not going to show because it is disgusting as are a lot of moments in this fucking movie. So then Jared feels sorry for himself and Nico asks, why don't you and Griff just fuck each other? And they're both kind of like, <laughs> Ew. No. <laughs> no. Indicating that obviously at some point during this movie they're gonna fuck. Then they hear Don somewhere in the distance very vocally getting laid. <laughs> My goodness. You know what they say, once Don strikes, they all go dyke. <laughs> 
Amen, sister. The next morning, they make a pact to all get laid by the end of the summer, like super American pie trope, no? We just need to make a pact. We all get laid before the end of the summer. Then they decide that the first thing they have to do is determine if they are a top or a bottom. And in short. Well, I, for one, am 100% top. Me too. What about you, Griff? Still thinking you're a top daddy? Yes. Oh, well, I'm a top, of course. Hmm. Pussy boy in denial. And finally, the pact is solidified by them all stating that they will penetrate by the end of the summer. But love here. here. We go! So to get the ball rolling, Nico signs up for Manhunt under the name Twinkerbell. And for those of you who might not be familiar with it, Manhunt was Grinder before Grinder was Grinder. And he plans a date with somebody played by Matthew Rush, who at the time I think was like the biggest gay porn star in the world. So then they weirdly start to dance, like they're at a circuit party. And then they do it ostensibly overdoses. And after they revive him, they all start to party together. God. So the next scene, Andy is shaving his ass and his dad barges in and it's really awkward. Is that a gay thing, son? Uh, I don't know. Do you shave yourself? <laughs> what? No. You don't have to answer that. And then we learn that Andy's dad got him an early birthday gift and it turns out to be, yep, you guessed it, an enormous butt plug. We love a supportive parent, honestly. And to quickly summarize the next few scenes, Jared gets his dick stuck in a penis pump where subsequently Andy's dad awkwardly helps him remove it by hitting it repeatedly with a plunger. And then Nico and Andy and Griff huddle up around the door to discover the horrifying sight of Jared's now fried and shriveled up dick, which they do show in the movie. And I'm not gonna put in this video, trust me, you do not wanna see it. Sorry. Then we find ourselves back with Andy who realizes that he's home alone and sees a quiche. I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but there was a scene earlier in the movie where Jared mentions that fingering a butt feels like a quiche. So I can only imagine what our dear Andy is going to get up to right now. You guessed it, he fucks it. And of course, his parents catch him. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the crumbs. The next scene, Nico comes out to his mother and she's like, no shit. I like guys. Duh. Then we see Andy, now on Manhunt, about to hook up with someone named Rodzilla. And lo and behold, it's Mr. Puckov. And turns out he's a dom top and kinky as fuck. Woof. Maybe a little more than Andy even understands. Andy shows up to his house and Mr. Puckov is a little bit shook at first. Can I still come in? Rodzilla. But says what the hell and lets him in. And Andy kind of acts like he's familiar with all the kinky stuff that Mr. Puckov likes, even though it's very apparent that he has no idea what he's talking about. I take it you have utmost experience in the scene? Oh, yeah, I'm an old pro. He even comments on his cool hammock. And then Mr. Puckoff slips off to get into something a little bit more comfortable. But suddenly we find out that Andy is actually being streamed online in some sort of interactive dungeon experience that Mr. Puckoff has set up and Don somehow found it and is watching and then gets Andy's friends to get in on watching also. That is so fucking illegal. Oh my God, Mr. Puckoff, you evil fucker. And the movie continues with an incredibly uncomfortable domination scene in which Andy's friends are just watching. And without getting into too many details, this horrific scene culminates in Andy underneath the glass table and Mr. Puckov on top of it going number two, which I'm not going to show because even if it wouldn't demonetize this video, it certainly would demonetize your spirit. Maybe this sex thing is just not all it's cracked up to be. Okay, then randomly in this next scene, we learn that Nico's trying to win over Richard Hatch. Who has a hot prospect for the weekend? I do. <laughs> International gay superstar Richard Hatch. Richard Hatch was the first ever winner of Survivor. And so naturally at the book signing, he is naked. And who should I make this out to? Mr. Ben Dover. Oh, you beast. <laughs> Sounds like a dream to me. You are not gonna believe who's in my room right now. Who? Oh. Richard Hatch. The scene progresses with Nico doing a weird strip tease in a kimono. Then suddenly Nico's blind girlfriend barges in. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Nico has a blind girlfriend who they introduce in the beginning of the movie. And so anyway, they get rid of her. Nico ends up erupting out of his butthole and ultimately soils his little sex fantasy with Richard Hatch, still remaining a virgin once again. Okay, this next scene honestly had me completely 
gagged. I don't know how much footage I can actually show from it because it's pretty fucked. But Andy's randomly at a public restroom and he goes to a glory hole in one of the men's stalls and does a little bit of a bird call. I don't know what the etiquette is around glory holes, but I'm guessing it's probably not that. But regardless, it works for him. He gets poked in the eye by the dick on the other end and then looks down, recognizes the shoes and realizes that? Oh my God. Worst nightmare unlocked, honestly. And then there's this scene that's supposed to be, I think, the film's version of touching, but it's just uncomfortable where his dad comes out to Andy. Um, I have something uh, to tell you, okay? Daddy's a bisexual, and it's all because of you. How sweet. Aww. I think the funny thing about this whole movie is that hooking up will never actually be this difficult for any gay man. Anyway, the boys are feeling very disenchanted at this point. I cannot believe I almost sucked my dad's dick. Don starts to give them sex advice. Maybe you should have done him. And Nico's mom has some words of encouragement. I sure do hope you get some ass play. And finally, it's the end of the summer and time for another party thrown by Don. Since I can barely stand to watch the last 15 minutes of this movie, I'll give you the quick recap. Jared is about to hook up with the guy he's dating for the first time and is extremely nervous, but Griff confesses his love for him and they finally have sex. I love you. Jared. Nico meets Don's rich grandfather and they finally have sex. And Andy finally has sex by having a threesome with the guys that show up to the party with Griff and Jared. And then the movie's over. Thank God. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, rewatching this video really did make me laugh a lot. There were some extremely uncomfortable moments in it, but that's kind of like the beauty and charm of it. And I will likely never watch it again. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Even if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs up anyway, because I'm so cute. And why don't you leave me a comment letting me know if you've seen the movie before and let me know what you think if you have. And also let me know some ideas of other things I could kind of recap, react, review also. I would love to know. As always, thanks again for watching the video guys. And until next time.